Hey, welcome in Stinky Truth Podcast alongside of uh, Mike Evans. I am Mark Schlarth. How come you look so much higher than I do right now? Well, because I, unlike you, are a true TV professional, and I realize that I must sit up straight. Don't no, slouch. Didn't your mother same, ever tell you not to I slouch? I have the same problem in, in when I'm on a television set. They always say, can you, hire, can you raise your chair? And I think I have a short torso. Tor- torso. Torso? Torso. Torso. I think my I think I'm I'm a long linear athlete, right? Like I've got long legs, yeah. but I think my torso has been jammed down. Maybe from all the contact. That's so it. Yes. I have a, a much from my, my waist up, I'm not as tall as I am from my legs down. We're gonna have to get you a higher chair. Yeah. Well, high chair. chair. We need a high chair. Put a note to who's in, <laughs> yeah, in charge yeah. of this. Not note to note to the. Mark uh, needs a high chair. Yeah, everybody. I need I need one of them boosters that I like <laughs> to put my booster. grandson yeah, in. Exactly. You know, just a little booster. It's like there. when you go to the restaurant, they give you that little yeah. block to sit on. Yeah, exactly. we need to give you a block to sit. How you Look doing? Good. I'm good. How are you? Uh, another busy, uh, busy day, busy week in the NFL. Right. Uh-huh. Aaron Rodgers. Ooh. Welcome the Jets traveling party, and it was a big one. Woody Johnson, Robert Sala. Um, Nathaniel Hackett, yes, the guy who was brought to Denver and was given the head coaching job with the idea that he would lure Aaron Rodgers to Denver. How'd that work out? It didn't, but boy, it does feel like this is going to happen with the Jets, doesn't it? It does. Well, they they did the same. I mean, the same tactic, isn't it? I mean, didn't there's a big part of Nathaniel Hackett getting his first opportunity to be a head coach? A big part of that was trying to lure Aaron Rodgers. To the Denver Broncos, that didn't happen. They went out and got, you know, obviously they went out and, and got Russell Wilson. Uh, but this certainly seems to be the same tactic. Not a head coach, but an offensive coordinator to get Aaron Rodgers. It does feel like he's going. It does feel like that's going to happen, right? What, what is it with the relationship between Aaron Rodgers and Nathaniel Hackett? Because remember, Matt Lafleur has been the offensive coordinator. He's been the guy calling the play. So what's so special about Nathaniel Hackett as a draw? For Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't. They just get along great? I I guess they get along great. Um, You know, I I mean, Nathaniel Hackett's a good dude, and and he's a funny guy. And, and, you know, I I guess there's some levity there. He just connects with with Rodgers. Yeah, I hear so, like, I hear so many things about this. First off, they all got on the, you know, the Woody Johnson plane, the Johnson and Johnson, and they flew across country, right? They went to meet Aaron Rodgers in Malibu or whatever California area that he lives in because he's a a California guy. So they flew down there to meet with him, and it certainly looks like they're going to lure him out of Green Bay. It certainly feels like the Green Bay Packers have basically said, hey, this is kind of how the life cycle of quarterbacks go here in Green Bay. We groom a kid behind a kid. Eventually, that guy gets the opportunity, or we give him the opportunity, because he's the one over the course of the last several years. Remember how this went with with Brett Favre. Brett Favre stayed in Mississippi. He didn't come to a lot of the OTA type of things. He didn't come to some of the, you know, non-mandatory mini camps and those things. And during that time, Aaron Rodgers is the guy that took all those reps. And eventually, they said, "Hey, man, this kid is going to be great." He's going to be a great player for us. So now is the time. And they decided to make that move. And then Brett Favre went on to the Jets and to Minnesota to play. And the same kind of scenario, hey, it's 15, 16, 17 years, whatever it is, it's time to move on. And I think there's a couple of things that have happened here. One, I think that Jordan Love last year, and, and this is not me just speculating, this is exactly what, because I asked Aaron Rodgers about it. This is exactly what he told me. He goes, last year was kind of a, almost an epiphany for, Aaron, for excuse me, for Jordan Love. Like Jordan Love looked at last year, and, and one of the things that Aaron Rodgers said is, when I was running the scout team and Brett Favre was a quarterback, man, it became very imperative to me to work on off-platform throws, to work on all the things that were going to happen to me during the course of a game, and to own that offense, to own that scout team offense, and to look at that card and say, okay, this is exactly like we run, you know, uh, two-jet dagger. You know, they'll draw the the plays up, and you say, this is just like two-jet dagger. This is, uh, you know, all-go special. This is uh, whatever, you know, this is uh, – curl burst you know this is this is exactly like we run curl and to execute it just like I would is if I was running my own offense to take ownership of that and take pride in trying to shove it up the ass of of your defense and he said last year was the first time that Jordan Love took ownership of that scout team of that look squad 
he took ownership of it. He started working on his stuff. And I told you this earlier in an earlier podcast that a big part of that was them going back and getting Tom Clements, who was the quarterback coach for Aaron when Aaron came into the league and taught him more about football maybe than just about any coach has ever taught him about football. Taught him how coverage ties to the front that you play, ties to, you know, all those things and, and the nuanced aspect of football and some of the drills and some of the things they worked on as a football team. And so Aaron, you know, Aaron said that that guy was pivotal over the course of his career in kind of teaching him the game. And, and I think bringing him back into the fold and having him help not only Aaron, but having him help uh, Jordan Love, I think has been pivotal in Jordan Love's progression and, and basically gives them the confidence to say, hey, we can move on now. Okay, so Jordan Love is ready to make the leap. Rodgers. Yeah, where where where's his game at? Right after what you watched last year, is this a guy who just had a slump year? Mm-hmm. Well, or let is me, this let a me, guy who's starting to you know? Let me let run. me just say this. Like, I'm just gonna tell you something about myself. Okay, I'm a good loser, but I'm a dick when it comes to winning. Right, and I will rub it in. And when Aaron Rodgers leaves Green Bay and goes to the Jets, <laughs> I'm going to give Green Bay the middle finger and let you guys know exactly how, like, I was right. You can you can send your apologies to me. So You might want to give the background on this. Yeah, well, I mean, so a couple of years ago, like, I got information, very good information, that they were trying to work a trade. And I, I really think that Green Bay and the Denver Broncos were trying to work a trade. And I just came on the radio because we were doing draft coverage that night and go, hey, man, this is like this is like this is happening right now. I was excited, right? I'm not a reporter. but it's actually, actually I'm, I'm the one to blame because yeah, you I, called me. I called you, you and said. You called me and said, hey, I, this is what I'm hearing. And I'm like, you got to get on our All right. draft coverage. You got to go on. You, and you're like, you think yeah. I should? You think, yes, go on. Yeah. And then you did, and you and I did, and, and, right? And, and then I just it, it just <laughs> snowballed out of control after that. And, and it wasn't even that I, like, I wasn't even trying. So I think one of the things you have to understand is that I get off and say, hey, "Man, like this deal could fall through, but it's like it's they're working on it, like it's close, yeah. like it could fall through." And I think it, there's two things that happened. One, I think it fell through because of exactly what I just told you. At that point, Jordan Love was not ready. He was not. He did not command the scouts. He did. They did not feel confident that Jordan Love. I think they feel confident now that Jordan Love is ready. He wasn't ready then. So I think that was probably one of the big deals that basically nixed that potential trade. Okay, so I think I think there's no question that that was one of the things that went on. And, and ultimately, it, it ended up stopping that. Now they're in a different spot. Jordan Love's in a different spot. Aaron Rodgers is in a different spot. They're ready to move on. So how much of this, though, is... But uh, let me... One last thing about that. As soon as I got off the air... Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? right. As that's soon right. as I get off the air, and, and I'm like, oh, Lord. I mean, literally, we go to break. Like, like you would... Like, throw something to break. Like, hey, we'll be right back with draft coverage. Go ahead. Right. Uh, all right. That's the uh, big news from uh, Mark Schlereth. We'll be back with more draft coverage right after this. Soon as, as soon as you did that, it goes, oh, shoot. Hello. <laughs> It's the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking I'm getting my ass chewed, right? right, right, right That's right, what I think right, it's going right, to happen, right? Yeah. So it's the Broncos. It's like, oh, gosh. And it's their main PR guy. So I'm like, all right. Hey, man, what's going on? Who told you this? This was the, the conversation. What, what do you mean? Who told you? Who told you? I'm not going to tell you who told me. I go, was it Aaron? Aaron told you. You're talking to Aaron? I go, well, I'm talking to Aaron, but no, it wasn't Aaron that told me. And he's like, ah. Just tell me who told you. Like, I'm not going to tell you who told me. All right. Bye. Like, not exactly a harsh denial okay, there, no. huh? So, I get calls from the Broncos frequently. You've witnessed yes. the Broncos calling me. If I say something that is off base, that is misinformation, yeah. I will get a call and then be like, it'll ring and I'll go, yeah, what's up? That is not true. This is what happened. Da 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 da. That it will, they will categorically deny, yep. deny it. Yep. There was not one denial. There was not one. That's not true. There was one. We haven't talked to them. There was not. You know, they kept. There haven't been official talks. That's the way they get around it, right? Yeah. So your underling talked to my underling and passed the underlings past the, like it, it, like there was zero denial from the Broncos. Zero, not one iota of denial. 
So those are the two things. So back to the question about Aaron Rodgers, okay? So the question is, where is Aaron? Aaron can still freaking play. Like, I, I find a lot of things interesting about Aaron. And I don't know Aaron. I, I probably knew Aaron a lot better years ago than I than I know him now, other than, you know, however well you get to know a kid when or a guy when you sit down and talk with him in production meetings, um, which I have the last several years. Uh but like we had we had different we had a different relationship. Like he called me the Thursday morning before they played in the Super Bowl to to ask me like advice. Like this is this is kind of the relationship we had. That was years ago. Um, that's not the same now. But you know, I hear all these things about well, he's mercurial or he's you know whatever. I don't know. You you give me the word. He's. Um, I, I don't know what the kind of quirky. Yeah, whatever the you know, mercurial. Um, yeah, just, right. Whatever the whatever the the vernacular is or whatever the adjective is to describe. You don't Aaron. necessarily think of him as wow, this guy is hardcore football like all the time. Yeah, no, no, no. I just find him. He's he's incredibly intelligent. Yep. He's incredibly well thought out, and I have not run across any of his teammates that have complained about their relationship with Aaron Rodgers. I think he's really close with most of his teammates. And now, will he hold his receivers? Will he hold people accountable? Yeah. You show me a quarterback that doesn't. Tom Brady, John Elway, sure. Dan Manning. Marino, Peyton Manning, Pete yeah. Manning. They're all bullies. Yeah, they, they in all a good way. They want it. They want it the way they want it. And so I, I just – I find the narrative of, oh, you know, you're going to have to deal with Aaron and all that comes with Aaron. What? Winning? Excellent play? Demanding? Wanting to do things he knows work? Oh, uh, sign me up. I'll sign up for that. So I just, I find, I find some of the narrative out there about, oh, well, if he goes to the Jets, dude, the Jets ain't one. I mean, Dude, they haven't been worth, like, legitimately in years a score to piss, okay? And they're lacking something. I think last year they were incredible. Defensively, they were great. I love Robert Saul. I think he's a damn good coach. I, I think they're, they're poised. I think they have some young offensive talent. They need, they need that dude playing quarterback. So your message to Jets fans, and be honest, because I know you've had a, a, a love sure. hate. You've had a lot of fun with Jet fans. Mm-hmm. Over, over the years, but you're honest. Their excitement level at the idea of getting Aaron Rodgers should be what on a scale of 1 to 10? 10. 10. 10, all right. Do, do you get Aaron with what you've put out there defensively and what with what I know about Robert Sala, um, you get Aaron Rodgers and some of the young talent that you have on that football team. Who's better in the can AFC they, East? Can they beat the Bulls? Bull- can they challenge the Bills? Yeah, they can. Could they challenge the Bills? Absolutely, they could challenge. I think. What do the Bills want? They won a bunch of games. I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you, man. That, that would intrigue me. That would intrigue me in that division. They could, they could definitely at least challenge them. I mean, both of them are really talented football teams, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, they could challenge them. So, I'm all, man. I can't wait, and I can't, like I said. I'm a great loser. I'm a gracious loser. I'm a dick when it comes to winning. Yes. I mean, I absolute dick. <laughs> I can't wait to win because I am gonna pummel you people in Green Bay. <laughs> I, can't. I, I was right all along. I, I Took cannot. a couple years, but I was right. Even when I'm wrong, I'm right. Yes, <laughs> I love it. Uh, are the Ravens right in how they're handling Lamar Jackson? They put him on the uh, franchise tag, the non-exclusive franchise tag, mm-hmm. so he can go out. And he can work out a deal with another team, get the contract that right. he wants, get right. the Deshaun Watson type contract that he wants, and that team would not only have to give up the contract, but also give up a couple of first round picks. Good move by the Ravens. And what is the market for Lamar? So it, it, they're both interesting questions because uh, it, it's twofold. One, they have offered him what one hundred and thirty three million dollars in guaranteed money. What did Derek Carr just get? About a hundred. About a hundred. What did uh, Daniel Jones get? About eighty. About eighty. Now, 
obviously, Lamar is an MVP, right? He's won an MVP. You do realize the last two years in a row he's played 12 games of the total 17. So there is an injury history, if you will, and there is an issue, and I've, I've talked to you about this before on this podcast. I've talked to you about the issue is, is the form of offense that they play in right now sustainable? And here's the crazy thing. You know, I get people, and it always comes down to, um, you know, it always comes down to race and, oh, you don't, you know, whatever. Stop. Just, just stop. Well, if he played, I get this one too. Well, he played in a pro-style offense in Louisville. I don't give a shit. Louisville. Who cares? Right? You're Like, how many guys from Louisville make it in the National Football League? And I'm not disparaging the, the, the division. I'm not disparaging the team. Like, the best, like, it's the same argument I get with people say, well, Alabama could beat the worst team in the NFL. Are you kidding me? Alabama has six guys that are going to be prominent NFL players on their roster. There's 22 starters on an NFL roster, and especially in the trenches where full-grown-ass men play. It's it's different. It it's ridiculous. It's the most ridiculous. It just goes to show you that most fans are stupid. Anybody who brings that up, you're just dumb. That's just a dumb take, right? But the bottom line, going back to Lamar, is. People say, well, they should just put him in a pro-style offense. Well, why don't they? Because that's not what he's run. That's not what he was capable of. That's not what he was ready for. Has he progressed? Certainly. Certainly he's progressed. But you show me the teams or you show me the games where he's gotten into where the Baltimore Ravens are down and he has to rely on being a drop-back passer. And what the... What the Baltimore Ravens are telling you, I'm not, this is not me. This is not Mark telling you this. This is the Ravens, and this is the other teams that have already said, we're out on Lamar. Miami, Carolina Panthers. Did the Carolina Panthers need a quarterback? I think it was Carolina. Was I, if I'm mistaken, I apologize. But I think those, there are already teams that have come out and said, we're out. Why? Okay, so. We know the answer, but yeah, because let, let, so, we talked, we told people just last right. week on this podcast what the answer is. But right. yeah, go ahead. What is it? Well, the answer is that that most of the people I think in the NFL right now look at that style of offense that the Baltimore Ravens run and say that's what he is. That's where he excels. But that's what, if, what he's good okay, at. Okay, but what if he was okay with a contract to put him in line with Kyler Murray, Derek Carr? Russell Wilson. That it was a be, contract that was... Then he the, would be signed in Baltimore okay. right now. So this isn't as much about style because those other contracts have been handed out, and you say the Ravens would be willing to hand out a contract mm-hmm. like that to... So what it comes down to, and this is, it further explains why some of these teams have already taken themselves out of the running, it's collusion. The NFL is sending a very clear message, we are not going to go anywhere near that Deshaun Watson contract. That was an outlier. That was Jimmy Haslam in Cleveland going rogue... That's not how the owners want the contract structures of these quarterbacks to go in that direction. So it is collusion among NFL owners. He's not getting that kind of deal. and We're already taking ourselves out of the running, if that's the deal, if that's the contract. That's as simple as what it is. is, is this isn't about okay, let me style, ask you Mark, as is, much is, as it is about it, money. It, let me. Ask, well, of, of course they don't want to go anywhere near that contract. Is that collusion or is that good business practices? Is that it, they have their owners meeting and going, hey guys, we can't like that's we're not going to guarantee fully guarantee. Is that collude? Is that is that the it, it, you can sit there and say business practices is like is it full collusion or is it? I mean, because obviously, obviously they look at that contract as the outlier, mm-hmm. and nobody's met that contract since that outlier. Remember, Kirk Cousins got eighty four fully guaranteed on a three year deal, but again. Is that the NFL basically saying we're not going down this road? Yes. Can you prove collusion? Probably not. You can. But here's the other thing about. But I don't think it's 31 other owners just all of a sudden deciding, hey, listen, we're all going to practice sound business here. Right. No, 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 no. There, there, there have been those. I, I'm just saying you can't prove it. Like, right. Right. Collusion is very hard to prove. Right. Yeah. Very hard to prove. So, but, but the bottom line is this: the, for for the other teams, the teams that have already said they're out. So think about what Baltimore, the Baltimore Ravens created add this big thick strong just physical o-line 
They had three tight ends that lined up and were six foot five, two hundred sixty-five pounds that could run routes and beat the I uh, just beat the piss out of you. They have a fullback who's three hundred and fifteen pounds that played part-time D line that became a Pro Bowl fullback. Like they had receivers that were more blockers than they were receivers. Like that's the the offense they've constructed. And for me, I look at teams going, yeah, we're out. It's not so. It's not the the reason they're out is not as about uh, um, as much about collusion as is. What are we going to do with the, our none of our offensive personnel match with the Baltimore Ravens and that offense are. So how are we going to actually go? Yeah, let me get into Lamar and let me change all of my tight ends. Let me change my fullback or let me go out and get a fullback because we don't even have one. Let me get a different offensive line that's not so. But that's not such a pass blocking group. Let me get a guy, a bunch of guys that can just be road graders. Oh, let me get a bunch of receivers that don't actually want to catch the ball. Like, you, all you, while not having two extra first round picks. Right. Like, yeah. like it. It just is. Like that part is. That part is silly to me. So this is the Ravens basically saying, okay, Lamar, let me. Like, you think we're trying to screw you because we won't give you the Deshaun Watson fully guaranteed deal? Go out and see what you can get. Go out, yeah, go out and see what the what the market and then come back to us. When you see what the market is, then come back to us. Easy to do that when you know that what he's going to find is collusion. I mean, it's easy to say go out and bet, get a better deal when you already know that that's not going to happen because there is collusion going on. Well, there yeah, nobody wants to give that contract. I get it. Yes. I get it. But but there are there are other extenuating certain like nobody's going to change their whole offense. Hey, let me, let me go out and get Greg Roman. Let me go out and get you know Marty Mortingwood. Let me go out and get one of the coaches that have put this offense in to begin with. Let me go change my whole offensive structure, my whole personnel structure. Like you can't do that. Like it, it's not going to happen. We we're talking about Aaron Rodgers and the possibility is Aaron Rodgers in decline. Well, Russell Wilson definitely looked like a quarterback that was in decline mm. a year ago. Sean Payton is here to fix Russell Wilson, fix the Broncos, but first job is to fix Russell Wilson. Yeah. Uh, there was a report from your buddy Matthew Berry from mm, yeah. ESPN. He was out at the Combine. He, he with uh, NBC Sports now, I believe. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So he said that one of the things he heard is that Sean Payton is not really a big Russell Wilson fan and that Russell Wilson's basically looking at a one-year audition to convince Sean Payton. Mm-hmm. You buy that? One year? This is it. Oh, One year for oh, Russell Wilson. Oh, I don't think there's sink or swim. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that. I don't know. I don't know that Sean Payton is or isn't a Russell Wilson. I know he's coached him in the Pro Bowl. I don't know that he is a Russell. I don't know that he isn't a Russell Wilson. I, I just, you know, I, anybody can speculate on that. Oh, he doesn't like him, or he likes him, or whatever. You know, I mean, I also heard he's bothering Drew Brees. No, he said the, Sean Payton goes. He's wearing Drew Brees out. I, I don't know about you, man. I was I was in Denver in 2013. Okay, I was here. Well, I, I live here, but I was at practice. John Fox practice. Peyton Manning. Okay, so Peyton Manning is running um, a blitz pickup drill, and Peyton Manning. There's not one coach on the field. Peyton Manning's running the whole drill. He's got a scout team defense. He's got his offense, right? And he's run, and he's like getting out there. A receiver doesn't run the exact route. He'd get out there and he'd be like, "You gotta," <laughs> you know, he's the most unla- of la- unathletic looking dude in the history, right? And yeah. he's just he's just in people's asses, right? He's just getting after people and he's wearing dudes out and he's screaming at this guy, and screaming at this guy. I want it not at eleven yards. I want it right at ten yards, you know. And I mean, he's just going to town, right? And so I'm watching practice. I'm out there. I don't even know why I'm out there. It's in the. It's during the season. Um, I, I don't even know why. I, I don't even know why I was out of practice. I, I think I got invited. Maybe Foxy invited me or whatever. I don't know. But, but whatever. I'm out there standing there watching practice. And like I said, not one coach coaching. There's no. There's nobody giving plays or anything else. It's Peyton's drill. So Foxy, I'm on the sideline just watching, and Foxy walks up to me and goes. Peyton demands that we do this drill every day. <laughs> we do this every day. Not one coach involved. He's like, we're the least blitz team in the National Football League. <laughs> Nobody blitzes us. He goes, he goes, this is a waste of time. But Peyton demands that we do it. Just so, you know what? We do it. Because Peyton wants to do it. Peyton Manning would wear your ass out. Yep. 
That is not a derogatory term. Like to morph that into something that was derogatory. You know, he's really bothering Drew Brees. No, he said he's wearing him out. Meaning, I want to know everything I can know about this offense. I want to know everything I can know about Sean Payton. I want to be on. I like that to me is a compliment of a guy going, I recognize yeah. that I played like doo doo and I want to fix it. Yeah. It's been open season on Russ for the last year. Yeah. And yet, I, I think we all thought at the end of the season, hey, this is a crossroads year now for Russ. He's going to have to make some serious right. changes. And already, right. he's, he's noticeably thinner. Yeah. He's dropped some weight. And he's wearing out Drew Brees. I, I mean, I would think that that's proactive stuff that yeah. should be make you encouraged if you're a Broncos fan. I, I think one of the things that's really interesting to me is there's – I don't know how many how many people have done more Seattle games than I've done in the last five years, but I've done a bunch. So I've, I've had a ton of meetings with Russ. I did, I did a, a Denver game this year with Russ. So I've had a ton of these of these meetings. And one of the things he always said to me is, I want to go down. I don't care about stats. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. I want to go down as the greatest winner of all time. Okay. Well, if that's what you want to do, because you are at a crossroads in your career. So – for nine, like you went to nine Pro Bowls. He was one of the winningest quarterbacks, if not the winningest quarterback ever in his time in Seattle, right? Now you look at his last year in Seattle. They didn't make the playoffs. He had the finger injury, all that kind of stuff. Then he comes here in Denver, and he was absolutely horrific. He was as bad as anybody that's ever played the game has been. And that's how bad he was. And you think about how... Hall of Fame voting works. So you want to go down as a great winner. And it was a foregone conclusion. You know, people would just talk about Russell Wilson, the future Hall of Famer, right? Can you play yourself out of the Hall of Fame? Absolutely. Absolutely. And and here's the interesting thing for me. So every year, guys like Peter King, guys like uh, the late, great John Clayton would call me, come, you know, come, Hall of Fame induction time. And especially when it came to D linemen and offensive linemen, guys that were close or on the bubble, they would call me about that because there's not necessarily, especially with offensive line, there's not statistics that automatically get you into the Hall of Fame, right? So they want your perspective as a player that played during that time. They want your perspective on playing against guys like Bryant Young and, and different guys. And so... There's always somebody in that room. There's about 50 guys that vote, right? There's always somebody in that room that stands up and lobbies against you. You've got people that are enemies of of the state, so to speak. They'll lobby against you, go, this guy doesn't deserve it. So think about Russell now. His last year had the finger injury. They didn't go to the playoffs. The split with Pete Carroll and, you know, the, the subsequent – he said, she said, stuff that has come out of, oh, he demanded it, Pete Carroll and, 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 and their general manager get fired and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. Then you come to Denver and have maybe the worst season in the history of quarterback play, okay? I mean, it was bad. Now you've gotten that coach fired after 15 games, right? Or six, Yeah, 15 games he coached. He gets fired. Now you get your wish, a guy that you talked about really wanted to play for, the guy that you talked about or the report said you had mentioned, I'd like Pete Carroll gone and I'd like I'd like Sean Payton to come to Seattle, right? So these, the, if you don't play well now with, with Sean Payton as your head coach, a real live NFL head coach that has won a Super Bowl and is in charge, a guy that, like we always say, well, he only won one Super Bowl with Drew Brees. Drew Brees wasn't Drew Brees when he got him. Drew Brees became Drew Brees, and Drew Brees works his ass off. Don't get me wrong, but Drew Brees became Drew Brees under the expert tutelage of Sean Payton running that organization. So if you had the kind of season you had last year, Russell did, like the worst season where mm-hmm. you, you, you spent the majority of the season with more bathrooms in your home than touchdown passes, Right. That was a stat that just kept going on and on and on until about week 15. Yeah. <laughs> so more more about that. And, and then you come back and you can't get it together under Sean Payton. And Sean Payton says after the one-year addition, see you around, mm-hmm. we don't want you anymore. Dude, you will effectively have played yourself out of the Hall of Fame. Yeah, not only that, but you will have played yourself now into 
that place that no quarterback wants to be. You are now going to be the starter until the you're now going to be the starter until the guy who got drafted to be the quarterback of the futures radio. Right. You're going to be the bridge guy. Yeah. Or you're just going to be backup. That that's where he's at right now. Talk about a crossroads. Right. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Yeah, that is you're right. You're the guy that plays. You're the, you're the guy that plays until the the bridge dude is ready. You become Tyrod Taylor. Right. Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. Carson Wentz. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you become uh, Mitchell Trubisky. Yes. Yes. Make way for Kenny Pickett. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. That's what he's facing if he doesn't turn it around this year. Which is crazy. And say goodbye to the Hall of Fame. Which because here in here in Denver we just celebrated uh the the one year anniversary of the trade yeah and you think about how much has changed in just one year where we went from thinking hey you got a guy here that's coming in that's going to win multiple super bowls right. and go head to head with patrick mahomes one year later we're talking about a guy that if he doesn't get his stuff together we're getting him out yep. we'll eat that contract he yeah. becomes mitch trubisky it is that yeah so i that? mean hmm. that i'm like I've heard people say, "Oh, you can't play yourself out of the out of the Hall of Fame." Oh, yeah, you yes, can. You can. You can play yourself out of the Hall of Fame. Yes, you can. Play like you did last year and keep playing that way, and you will know you. It it will be you. You put up Hall of Fame type of numbers for a number of years. In spite of you, it was because of Pete Carroll. It was because of the way you operated that offense. It was because of. Uh, of what you guys did. It Legion was because of that defense yep. and everything else, it wasn't you. Yep. Interesting stuff, man. Well, we spent all this time talking about quarterbacks, which you love, because we didn't mention an offensive lineman once. Good podcast. Good show. Uh, no, we did. We mentioned – did we not mention about – maybe we did. Did we mention an offensive lineman? Offensive linemen are great. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> See you next week. Yeah. Hey, for everybody involved in the C2 Podcast, we thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you. Uh, make sure you uh, like it and uh, comment on it below and uh, share it and uh, subscribe. That's what I, That was the word I was looking for. It took me a while to get there. But subscribe to the podcast. For Mike, I am Mark. Thank you so much for being with us.